another episode of Hustle Bunny. I am your host, Miss August Sky, And I am your co-host, Hunter Stallion. And we are so happy to have you guys back today. Um, how have you been? I know it's summer. Summer's coming to a quick end. It feels it's like been it's a been a moment. Here. Yeah, yeah it's been good. a already. Right. We like to stay booked and busy. Um, the summer's been really good. I know you're coming from Los Angeles. I'm over here in Denver. So we're having a little you know, cross country moment. And we love it. Technology, bringing, bringing the hoes together, bringing the working girls together. Oh yeah. The internet stays undefeated for the most part. So I guess we should do like a little bit of like a summer recap because it's been a while oh. since we've recorded. So how about you start off? How's your yeah. summer been? Work um, every How's work and everything? Everything. So I think the last time we were in the studio, it was like kind of getting into tax season. We we're talking about like our money, getting everything filed. You know, we always get robbed by Uncle Sam, but we play the game the right way. Um, and that's how we get our tax return. So it's been really good. Um, I moved into a new place, um, kind of close to the Denver Museum of Art. I have a, a beautiful view of the city, which is something I never thought I would have growing up. Um, just kind of like another reminder of what the adult world and what OnlyFans and Just for Fans has done for me. So it's it's been really, really nice. Um, we definitely miss you here in, in Colorado, but I know you'll be back soon. And so we're we're looking forward to it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I mean, I'm all great things happening for you. It's always good when you feel your hard work paying off and then you get this opportunity to level up and, yes. you know, see, see everything happening and coming into fruition. And I seen the views from your place. It's absolutely gorgeous. It has like a sky rise, New York, downtown Denver, 360 view, mm -hmm. um, 360 view, excuse me, with like the mountains and everything. So, um, yeah, that's amazing. Congratulations. I'm glad that you stay moving up and everything is working out for you. Thank you. On that same subject, I heard that you won a, a little award not too long ago. Um, let's hear about that. Yes. Yeah, so my summer's been absolutely crazy. I made the decision to move out to LA. Um, originally just for the summer, I asked my agent, I said, if I come out there for the summer, you can make it worth my time. I think I, uh, he definitely succeeded in doing that. So as of right now, I'm in LA. I think by the end of the year, it might be my permanent residency, oh. which also coming back to Denver, though I always have a home in Denver. Um, oh. But yes, it's been a crazy busy summer, booked and busy. I have so many new scenes coming out for you guys. Um, but yes, I did. I actually went to the Urban X Award show two nights ago in the middle of hurricane out, in, <laughs> out here in Cali. Oh, so the it, hurricane season. The hurricane season. It was Hurricane Hillary came and flooded us all out, but um you know, people in Cali, apparently they just keep it pushing. So um, it was a, it was a fun, rainy night. And I was actually nominated for three categories, which I, I mean, I guess I found out a couple of months ago, but I didn't know that I'd been nominated by any means. Um, but it was supposed to be for Urban X Hottie, Best Newcomer, and then Best Breast. And okay. then I was also a presenter, which was a lot of fun. My first time presenting an award to... Um, anyone but as far as the award goes I won one out of the three which was best breasts so boobies boobies keeping the bills paid out Absolutely. here uh, yes and it was also a lot of fun just to meet and network with a lot of legendary people um, and all these fun all it was, it was an amazing time it was it, I was so happy that I came so that is amazing. I know you've been working really hard and it sounds like some of those doors are starting to open up and that recognition is flowing through. It's always fun when you kind of just show up to an event and then the next thing you know, you're taking home one of the awards. So congratulations on that. That's that's super amazing. Thank you. Yes, first award thus far in my whole career. So I'm super excited. Um, and it was so nice too to like walk the red carpet and there's so many people um, that you don't realize that are actually looking forward to meeting you as well. So it was such like a beautiful experience. And I was super grateful and super, um, super overwhelmed with happiness of how amazing um, that experience was. That is so that is so awesome. I'm just imagining you like holding an award while like the rain is pouring down somewhere in California, like all hell brick and loose. And I love it. I love it. Yes, yes, it was a messy. It was a great time. It was a beautiful time. Um, but with that being said, let's uh, let's get this episode on the road. Absolutely. I know um, 
with everything coming together, all of us being booked and busy, and we all know that summer is that time of trying to get the most done because, you know, end of the year, I feel like a lot of us, I mean, at least myself, I know like after around like October, Halloween, November starts to roll around, I really start to close out my books. And yeah, because everyone's going to start traveling, going home, holiday season and all those fun things. So with filming always comes our side hustle of running um, OnlyFans, Fansly, Loyal Fans, all those fun things. And today we're going to be talking about what do collaborations look like? Because many of us know that collaborations and merging with another brand can really help escalate and um, give us more of a platform and reach out to so many different people that we didn't know could be fans. So, so yeah, just kind of yeah. going to that subject of collaborations, um, maybe we can talk about a little bit of what our experience is. Um, so like, you know, for me, I first started off with OnlyFans. Um, everything I had done, I had done with my partner. So it was kind of just him and I both having an OnlyFans playing together. But as time went on and we wanted to kind of explore a little bit, we've had uh, other people like good friends of mine. I have a good friend from Tennessee. He was actually just here a couple of weeks ago. Um, so every now and then he'll either fly to Denver or I'll fly to Tennessee and we'll all film something together. Um, and that's been a lot of fun. And from for his perspective, he's not really an adult content creator, but he was willing enough to make an account and get verified and do all of the adult things that you kind of need to do um, so that we can have fun and, and you know get into some trouble on camera. Um, but I'm wondering for you, um, August, since you're more of an industry girl and you're you know out there in LA getting those awards, what does a collaboration look like when you have an agent and when you're in the adult industry proper? So for me, I will say that in the industry, it's kind of different. There are people who like they are on the go 24 seven with collaborations. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. I personally, I don't really care to do collaborations with a whole lot of different people, especially like um, just because a lot of people they see that the, the people that I tend to collaborate with, if I do the rare occasion that I do do collaborations um, is probably with someone that I've already worked with on set before. Um, I really don't work with someone I haven't already previously worked with. And um, for for a whole different, a whole bunch of different reasons. Um, I think I had the best success when I was making full-time content with just one partner because yeah. um, it makes it easier. You're saying, okay, if I do one video a week, that's four videos a month. And I can just fill that in with behind the scenes and all these different things. Um, a lot of my fans, for me being a mainstream person, if I go out and I shoot content with someone I'm already shot with for like a scene for browsers or reality kings are like okay we've already seen that before we see that for free on the internet we've already seen you fuck this person we want to see something that's a little bit more intimate or a little bit more different and it's also my comfort zone as well too just working with one partner um and when I do do collaborations I tend to do it with someone or something that's different right so a little bit underrepresented so I actually did my first collaboration with Leo Vice um and he is an Asian performer so I was like okay yeah like this is this is this is something that is completely different and that can definitely work um for my brand that's underrepresented um definitely working with like black performers just because in mainstream, I don't really get casted to work with like, a, a lot of black performers. Mm -hmm. So those are like, those are times when I find myself um, doing collaborations um, that actually work in my favor because it's giving me something different that I don't, don't already have. And that I know that is special for my fans. Absolutely. And so I guess I wonder for you specifically, like I know working in a studio with like another adult entertainer, would you consider that a collaboration or would you categorize that as something different? As far as like when I'm on set and I work yes. with a person, yes. like on a mainstream set? Yes. Um, I wouldn't really consider a collaboration. I would kind of just consider it um, just like an everyday shoe. I guess I've never really thought about it as a collaboration. You know, I think it's a little different on a mainstream set than on OnlyFans. I feel like when people do a collaboration, they they tend to think just like a, co a collab on the side for OnlyFans. They say, sure. okay, like we're going to merge our brands together 
opposed to a company bringing us together for their brand. Okay. I think that's helpful for people to know, just understanding that distinction of like, you know, maybe there's a fan for either August Sky or Hunter Stallion that would love to film mm -hmm. with us. And, and they think that collaborations would be the way to do it. But, you know, kind of making that distinction, maybe for someone like you working within the confines of the studio would be the best way for someone to pair with you. And that's kind of the avenue and the venue that they would they would do that. And so I think it's- Yeah, most, yeah I feel like most times- I, for myself, most times, like I have done a few collaborations with people that I really get along well with. We have really great chemistry. And I was like, okay, look, we have great chemistry. We're friends at this point. I know we're going to make some hot content. It's easy. We're on the same wavelength. And I have a handful of those people that I most times I've met, a hundred percent times I've met on set. And I was like, okay, like, let's do this. Um, but how about for you and like you being a full-time creator, you know, you said that you just had a um, a friend of yours come out from Tennessee and work with you. Now, was this your first time working outside of your relationship or have so, you and your partner worked outside of your relationship before? So we've done it before. We, we first started OnlyFans, um, I think in like March of 2021. So it's been a hot minute. Um, and later that year, we had uh, my friend, the same friend um, when he was living in New Mexico, when we lived together, uh, he, he, had fun with us and we had fun on camera and it was really exciting and we really enjoyed it. And so it's kind of turned into this thing where maybe like once a year, if we can find it in our schedule, either we'll go out to Tennessee or they'll fly out to here and we just have some fun and it's been really awesome and I've really enjoyed it. And to date, that's the only joint collab that I've done with anyone other than my partner. I feel like I might be in the same position that you're in where I have to say no more than I have to say yes. You know, I do get like DMs and, you know, stuff on Twitter from people that are really interested in um, you know, being on camera with me, but a lot of the times there'll be folks that don't really understand like the logistics behind having sex on camera in a legal way. Um, you know, for, you know, a big thing, at least with OnlyFans is someone has to be verified with the website, which means, you know, proving that you're, you know, above uh, 21 and also proving that you give consent to be on camera, which is a huge thing in the adult network. And so a lot of people don't really know all of that. And so and they hit me up with the like, oh, hey, I'd love to film with you and your partner. And I'm like, you know, are you verified? Are you, you know, do you do adult work at all? And sometimes when I hit people with those questions, they get really overwhelmed and they think I'm being a little bougie, but really I'm just covering my ass. And so it's it's interesting. No, I think that's, it's very fair that you bring that up because I feel like um, that's, that is on everyone how do I say this? Everyone deals with those things, right? So I, my problem with collaborations is, is that there's a lot of people who think that they're using this just as a way to have the opportunity to fuck you. Yes. And they say like, oh, like they try to disguise it by saying, hey, like, let's make content, right. you know? No, I'm not just making content. When's the last time you've been tested? Like, okay, have you ever made yeah, content yes. before? Who are you? You're not doing anything for me. If anything, you're doing this as a way to say, hey, like, I just want to, you know, I just want to just fuck. And then hopefully, like, you're just going to be OK with it. No, there's so much that goes behind it. And hey, if you don't have a verified account. All right. Well, I need a picture of your ID. I need you to be holding your ID. I need you to fill out this paperwork. And I need you to sign a non-disclosure agreement because if something happens and you don't want this to go out there in the world, at least I know that I'm protected and you signed on to this. So when you say all these different things, a lot of people, like you said, they start to get um, overwhelmed or nervous. Sure. And that's why I say I tend to only work with people that I've already worked with before, or I just stick to having my one partner um, because I do find it to be very aggressive. I get guys every single day who message me, um, hey, let's do a collab. Hey, like, let's do a collab even just like regular fans. It's like, no, I don't. I don't. Like you saying like, let's do a collab does nothing for me and it does everything for you as far as like you're getting this whatever experience of like sleeping with me, whatever it is. You know, obviously you have some sort of attraction to me, just like they have an attraction to you. They see your work. They want to be a part of your work and um, they kind of try and take advantage of it. And it's really not, it's really not, um, it's really not, it's really doesn't do anything for anyone. You know what I mean? So right. you do have to be very careful in that aspect. And that's one of the biggest cons is just having to filter out all the bullshit, um, which is most, is a lot of people. It's a lot of bullshit, especially like in the OnlyFans creator world that we live in now. Um, just like 
a lot of photographers that I work with are like, hey, we also shoot OnlyFans content. No, I don't need you to have me and my OnlyFans content out there. I don't need 50 people to have videos of me on their on their cameras and then also to come to find out that you're going to be selling that content and making like, no, I don't need all that. I don't know what kind of platform or website or all these different things that you guys are putting my videos and my work out there too. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people need to hear that because they don't realize like how much we put ourselves out there. Like, yes, we do have content on different sites. Like, you know, we're, we're getting fucked. We're doing the fucking all of that fun stuff. But more than that, it's like, you know, we cultivate a brand by creating this body of work. And it's like, yes, we are really accessible. And there are people that really admire us. But again, it's like, they don't really know all that goes into it. And it's like, you know, one thing you and I have in common, we're about our coin, like we're, you know, yes, we have fun doing it, but we're not just doing it for fun. We're doing it to make money. And that's why we enjoy it and why we do it. And so sometimes I have to tell people and I, you know, I might seem like I have an attitude, but I'm like, you know, if this isn't going to put money in my pocket, I'm not going to fuck you. And like some people can't handle that. Whereas there are some people that, you know, they're willing to, you know, be a sugar daddy or they're willing to put some cash on the table. And it's like, okay, now we can have a conversation because that shows me that you're serious about booking my time, about letting me know that you're not fucking around and that you understand that I'm off here doing other shit. And I'm not just sitting here looking pretty. I might get paid to look pretty, but there's shit that goes behind it that bolsters it up. And so I think a lot of people need to hear that both from someone who's in the industry, you know, in Los Angeles and someone who's out here kind of doing it on their own Um, because collabs are possible, but they just have to be done in the right way and they have to be framed in the right way. Definitely. And I feel like, so there has been like this thing on Twitter with a lot of um, performers or a lot of female performers coming together in general and stating that making OnlyFans content they'd much rather not do compared to just like filming on mainstream. Because a lot of people say like doing OnlyFans content is very personal and very like, it's very intimate in a certain aspect. And you're adding a lot of extra weight on an already weighted career. And I don't mean that like in a bad way because doing OnlyFans content is amazing. Of course, it's always extra income. It's some people, it's their main source of income right and there's some people who got completely out of porn to take full control over their career by doing only fans and fansly and all those other sure. um, all those other websites and i'm so glad that pe- people started speaking up because it's like all right if I, I did six shoots in one week and let's say i had a threesome scene an orgy scene and then i have to go on and like have to go do all these collaborations then you find yourself physically getting burnt out. You know what I mean? Then you tell yourself like, oh, like I have to screen this person. I got to make sure that their test is up to par. I got to do like a location. I have to come up with the concept. I still have to do hair and makeup. And that's already exhausting. And compared to going on set where all that's already taken care of for you and you just have to show up. Um, I know a lot of girls who said that they are, they just much rather just do solo videos or they would much rather just do girl, girl content just because it, it does give your body a break. But for myself included, I feel like doing con like being in that constant state of mind where you're putting your physical self out there all the time, especially working with like different partners, you do become exhausted. You do get burnt out. I don't want to be burnt out. And I don't always want to have to be in that state of performing. Absolutely. I'm not going to worry about for yourself, but like that constant, like, you know, I don't always want to have to be thinking about like, it's like being on, it's like the character, yeah. or the performance. Yeah, no. And I can totally um, relate to that. And just kind of on the subject of like burnout and how do we like preserve our mental health? Like, I know when I first started doing OnlyFans, it was so exciting. I was making so much money up front that like me and my partner were filming a scene like every single day. And we did that for like three months or yeah, for about three Mm -hmm. months straight. And it was just, even though I loved it, like it wasn't sustainable. Like my body was sore. Like I was like, it was just a lot to do. um, And we had to dial it back. And now I've reached a point in my career where, you know, I might have a whole month where I only film like one or two scenes and like, that's that's what you get this month because that's what I feel like putting out. I might have another month like when I had my friend over and we were collabing, we filmed scene after scene after scene and I was just dropping a bunch of content. And so for me, I had to reach a point where I had to be comfortable stepping away, even if the money did or didn't look like what I wanted, just because I look back when I was making like $5,000 a month, like that was also when I was the most stressed out because I was 
just filming. And I felt like if I didn't film, I was going to lose it all at once. Whereas now, like it is what it is and it'll come when it comes and it doesn't. But as long as I'm making content that I'm into and I can tell when I'm looking at myself on camera, like I was feeling it that day, then that's what it is. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think a lot yeah. of people need to hear that we do get burnt out sometimes and we do need to like take like mental health days. And like when we're doing scenes back to back, like that can be exhausting. Absolutely. It can be very exhausting. And I think that a lot of fans, um, they don't realize because they're always so caught up in like this fantasy. So they see us as like a, we're a constant fantasy to them. So they just kind of think that we are just like these like sexual beings and we're always just horny and we're always just ready to go. But then they tend to forget that, no, not every day am I, am I just ready to just get railed at any moment of any Absolutely. time of any day that's part of the um, magic is to get there to make it look like we just roll yeah, out the floor. right and you know i guess for you because you're making more um content consistently with your partner how does your partner feel about like your sex life with being filmed i know that one of my partners my long-term partner he um he did not like it after like a certain point. Like even if we just did one video a week, it just was not his his thing. And it became mm -hmm. like a stress that was on the relationship at the time. And he just did not like it. So I'm kind of wondering how was it for you and your partner and how does he feel and how do you um, kind of handle on a day where you're like, do we got to make this video? And he's like, no, I can't. Like, I really don't want to. Or like, I'm not really in that mindset. Yeah, um, I think those are really good questions. I think for me and my partner, um, I mean, we've been together almost a little over four years now. Um, and even when we were dating, we liked filming our sex life. I think that's something that I've always kind of had. I like documenting my encounters and I like watching them later. It's just very arousing to me. And so that was already something we did. We already had a body of work as our relationship started to grow of just really hot amateur fucking between the two of us. And so, you know, mm -hmm. when I first started OnlyFans, it was kind of just like a diary. It was like a place for me to put some really hot videos that like, you know, if someone saw them, they saw them. And if they didn't, they didn't. Um, but I just remember at the time when I got my first subscriber on OnlyFans, I was, I had a job and it was a job I only worked for one day. It was for a water treatment company. And uh, I was working over the phone calling people. And I remember the time my boss told me that she didn't have time to train me and that I'd have to just figure it out on my own. And in that time, I was just thinking, like, if you don't have time to train me, I don't have time to work for you. And so I remember driving mm -hmm. that first day and I felt so worthless and I felt so low because I was in this environment. I was doing a job that anyone can do. I knew that I wasn't valued and I felt like shit. And as I was driving home, I looked at my phone and I got like a $14 subscription on OnlyFans. And I was like, you know what? I bet you this could work and I bet you I can do this. And I know people have like a lot of stigma against porn. But the way that I felt leaving that job is worse than anyone has ever tried to make me feel for being an adult entertainer. Uh, I think being locked in that nine to five grind when you know it's not what you want is the worst thing in the world. And so for me and my partner, starting an OnlyFans, putting up what we already did, it was just kind of like a natural progression of where we were already at. And I mean, for me, I really, it was kind of luck. I mean, the very first month I did it, we immediately took off and we were already making, you know, four grand the first month. And so right away, I was like, this is more money than I've made doing anything else in my life. And it was just shit that I was already doing. So let's just see how far this wave goes. And, you know, three years later, it's, I'm in Denver. I'm, you know, here in the Hustle Bunny studio talking to you. And so it's been a beautiful journey. Yeah, I love that. I love that. It is like a, it's, it is like a slow progression, but it always happens so fast. I remember like when I first started any sort of sex work, when I started being like a dancer or sugar baby, but like the biggest thing is like, once you get that first bag, you're like, oh no, we gotta stay getting this bag. You're oh, like, yeah. this is this is how people, this, like this is what's out here. Like I can actually, this is actually like a feasible thing for me. Like I, I actually show, I actually have something to show for that work that I put in. Okay. I woke up, I did my hair, I did my makeup, I did all of these different things. Um, and now it came back to me, right? Like all my hard work is coming back to me and people are seeing that. And that is, that's another downside. It's like a double-sided sword because it seems like you are very similar to me in that aspect of, we both like to work and it is because it is like that positive reinforcement of like getting money like that. You're like, okay, well, I'm going to go hard in the paint 
every single day. It's going to be great. I'm going to keep getting that bag. It's going to be more and more and more, especially when you're getting yourself out of a place. I'm just working normal nine to fives. I've had two, three you know, jobs at one time to make ends meet and still not have anything to show for it. So making that jump into sex work, adult work, um, definitely does make a rapid change in your life. You know, it was a big change for me. I know when I had started doing OnlyFans, I've been on and off with OnlyFans for a long time now. OnlyFans, when it first started, when it was super taboo, like 2018, 2019, where it was like easy to make money because it was like, well, if you want to see like this, like naked picture of me, like come here, right? Right. And then of course, after COVID and the whole Bella, the uh, Mm -hmm. Bella Thorne, I think. I know her, yeah. yeah. for everybody then I was like okay it's like on it's like off it's like on it's like off um but now like being an adult entertainer people always want to see different things but it it is a hard balance you know making content and filming especially when you're new because you want to take those opportunities from a mainstream studio I will cancel a collaboration if I if browsers ask me to come shoot for them I will cancel if I get a booking from you know, Reality Kings or Vixens or Naughty America. You know why? Because that's going to be better for me in the long run than me doing a collaboration and like not not making any income off of it right away. That's true. But I think like the first couple of years in any adult entertainer's career, anyone that wants to be, that seems to be successful in my opinion and from and from performers that I have talked to who have been in the game for like a long time, your first year and a half, like you booking and like working with studios and building your brand and getting your name out there is huge. Absolutely. Now I know there's some people who they go, they just went from fucking zero to a hundred. They were working every single day. They did all the collaborations with everybody they possibly could. And of course, like their career fucking, you know, took off. Now with that being said, there are some people that I've worked with and they're like, oh, like you've worked with these com- like these major companies so many different times and I haven't even been booked with them once. It's like, yeah, because you you want to shoot, you want to shoot your OnlyFans content and there's nothing wrong with that. Like if that's how you get your bread and butter, fucking do it, fucking shoot that. But you can't say, I'm going to turn down this mainstream suit, you know, set for this. And it is like a double-sided. So everything is different for everyone. That's what I should say. What works for, for me doesn't isn't going to work for the next person. There is no perfect recipe to finding success in this industry. Um, so, I mean, with yeah. all that being said, you know what I mean? I guess I sound like I'm just spewing a whole bunch of different information. But you just got to figure out what works for you. And it is like a work collaboration balance. So what works for me one person let's make this content let's do some solos you want to see the behind the scenes footage of me on set with the person that i'm working with hey do that too because pretty much every performer has only fans so cool like you want to see my daily life routine you want to talk to me you'll get maybe you'll get you'll get what i give you you know and then you guys appreciate that and then you have to you also have to set boundaries with your fans too absolutely And so just kind of bringing it back to like the theme this week of collaborations, maybe you could tell us like what the threshold was for you as like being a solo performer, or I know you have a background of like dancing. When did that transition to like actually doing adult work on camera with another partner? I don't know if you want to talk about like your first time working with someone or just a memorable time, but when did that threshold kind of get crossed to where it's like, okay, now I'm being booked and paired with other models, like with major studios and doing like the real thing. As far as like mainstream? Yes, yes, t- totally mainstream. Um, so I get, I, I, well, when I got signed to my agency, I think it was probably about two weeks after I got signed, they, they flew me out and I, I shot with my first, um, I shot with my first company and it was fucking great and they told me if I wanted to stay there's these other companies that would like to work with you if you don't want to do another shoot you know you can go home it's just a test shoot before you sign with us to see um what's going on with that as far as like shooting on mainstream and like collabs and all those different things I don't know who my scene partner is until maybe like the night before Okay. okay maybe up to two days before so there's no 
I don't get to pick and choose who I get to work with. They just say, hey, this is a person you're working with. And another big thing is any, there's so many different um, factors that play into it, right? So your scene partner could be sick, could cancel, could pop a dirty test, could have anything. So you don't really know because everything last minute can always change. Oh, that person's car broke down. Oh, that person like this, this and this. So it is kind of hard to say, hey, like I'm working with this person. So I think that's something that should be made really clear to people is like, we don't get to pick and cho choose our scene partners. Now, if you tell your agent, hey, I see this person on my, on my, on my call sheet, I've researched them. I don't really like this person. I don't really like what they're about. Or you can say, hey, I've worked with this person before. I don't really like working with them. I'm not going to take this shoot. Now you have that say so, but we don't get to know who we're working with that day.